Okay, YouTube, welcome back to my channel. This is Disability. Um, we are going to touch base on um, our leftovers. What do we do? What do we do with our leftovers? What do we do after we modify our cabinets? After we add what we want on it? After we do so much to it that, you know, we get stuck with extra parts or, you know, we change out parts and and we change out things and we get stuck with with extra stuff like like the uh, controller board this is my beat up controller board from my original street fighter cabinet i changed out the board i went with something from diy retro arcade and i changed everything out you guys can see that in my channel you guys can see that in my video this is an extra plexiglass overlay that i had um it has a couple of hairline cracks in it but that's fine for this little project, I really don't care too much of it. It's just going to be something to keep the controller board nice and clean and useful. Um, then we have the uh, the bottom piece for the controller board. Some of us are using it as trays inside the cabinets to add our uh, our manual, our cables, our uh, power strip, our, our leftover parts. You know, this is my... This is my underneath thing, and I, I took it from underneath my uh, cabinet because I'm going to use it in this project right now. I'm, I'm going to make something a little useful and, 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 you know, something that's not just sitting there collecting dust, you know, something that we can actually use and mess with. Um, on this uh, video, we're going to transform all these parts to something uh, unique, something uh, different, something playful. Something we could use on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I wish I could use it on the, the higher end systems, but it just takes too much and just too much hassle. And I've done it on another controller I'll showcase later on. But um, on this, you know, it's just going to be a simple little project. I mean, the plexiglass doesn't have to be um, in tip-top shape, the overlay. You know, it's just as long as it functions and does what I want it to do. Um, we're going to be adding a skin onto this controller board. Um, thanks to, uh, Tyler at, uh, Arcade Graphics. He is, uh, for me the best right now that, that does all the great graphics for me. Um, I've done some of the designs on Adobe Photoshop. I send him the image and on his template, he knows what I want, how I want it to look. And he sends me back some outstanding product. And, and the recent product he sent me is this right here. What this is, a image I found off a off of Google and I altered it a little by adding the dragons and the Mortal Kombat logo in the color. This is Sub-Zero and Scorpion from Mortal Kombat 9. Um, and I just wanted to get a nice textured skin to throw over this controller board so that I could uh, clean it up, you know, make it look nice. Do a nice, it's going to be like a control stick, a two player control stick for the Raspberry Pi. And maybe later on, if I decide to change the insides, you know, get it to work on the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4 or the PlayStation 3. Um, let's just leave it for the pie right now. We're going to do something simple, something basic. Um, the the amount I paid on the uh, the skin, I'd say under $15, if not less. The image was nothing. The design was nothing. I did it on Adobe Photoshop, sent it to Tyler. And he uh, printed it out on this matted textured vinyl that I plan to put on this controller board. Uh, the plexiglass, the overlay, extra uh, practice plexi that I was messing with to do the layout. It still works. Has a couple of hairline cracks, but that's fine. All I got to do is drill out the hole for the uh, for the uh, controller board side, and just to you know connect the plexiglass. It's gonna be something simple, something easy. Probably a half an inch or an inch screw that I'm going to put there. Because this is not going into a cabinet. No, it's not. It's just going to be a loose two-player control stick that I plan to use just to, you know, mess around with. Probably test. Probably just play, you know, something simple, basic. Um, my only expensive item that I did for this project would have to be the controls. Yes, I, I, I went out and got new controls. I got a set of blue and a set of yellow uh, buttons 
and glue stick. Uh, I do have the bat top for this, a clear blue and a clear yellow that I have to bring out for the remaining of the project. But the reason I like, you know, I think this is the only expensive product that I put onto this project. It's about $68, probably a little more with tax and shipping. Well, probably not shipping because I got Amazon Prime. I got these off of Amazon Prime by the company of uh, SJ at JX. Okay, if you guys can see that. All right, their buttons are are um, almost identical to the stuff that's out there that you guys are getting. The only difference is their wiring setup is very minimal. It I don't have to use so many wires. I don't have to use so many um so many connectors, so many um so many um splitters, so many whatever it takes to connect this stuff. I don't have to use so many. Their wires are very, very minimal and it's very sleek and easy I think for me and I like it. And and it's just more easier. Their their wiring setup is ribbon. Okay, and with this controller setup, this two player setup, I got one, not two, but one zero delay board that takes both players. Their cable system is all ribbon. Okay, so there's not 20,000 wires all over the place. You just easily split these in, in the right order or the right, you know, positioning. Okay, and you can get you can get your buttons layout inside this controller board, nice and neat and nice and clean. You don't you don't have to have twenty different cables all different directions, making a big giant spaghetti mess. So that's one uh one one upside that the cabling system is ribbon. Your uh, zero delay board is one for two, meaning it's one board for two players. You got one side for player one, one side for player two. Another advantage is your cable from the zero delay board to your Pi is also one. It doesn't have to be two separate separate um, cables because it reads uh, both joysticks on one, one uh, zero delay board. And with, with the code on your Pi image it reads both controllers perfectly player one player two i will show that and showcase that in the video and um show you how to do that yourself and you only have one cable to the pi you don't have two cables where you're eating up your power from your pi you know you you have one cable from your zero uh zero delay board to the pi and then that zero delay board splits up for two players Another bonus that I like about this setup, okay, not only the ribbon, the zero delay board, I like these buttons very much for the simple fact that these buttons from this company come tagged, meaning they have letter setups. They have um, distinguished lettering on them. You know, you got, uh, right now I got the basic. Uh, Raspberry Pi setup button so you got your A B C D and your L1 L2 L uh L1 L2 R1 R2 you got your two player uh and you got your coin okay uh for this setup my scorpion is gonna be player two my sub zero is player one because sub zero is my guy I like him and, and and I like to pick him all the time so he will be my player one also on these uh, buttons, they're LEDs. Yes, that's right, guys. They light up. They light up. These things glow and shine when you power it up. When you power up your Pi, your buttons will light up, and you will get that that glow, that yellow glow, the blue glow. You know, you can get them in any color you want from this company. And I've I've said it in almost all my videos since my first set of buttons that I got. From this company, I've never went back. My original buttons were the basic uh, color buttons that um, ETA Prime suggested 
on his website, on his channel. There were the basic uh, buttons there. And, you know, I did a little more research because I figured for the price, I figured for the price, you know, that you're going to pay for the ones at ETA Prime. And don't get me wrong, ETA Prime is an awesome dude. I follow him all the time. Anything new he puts on there, I follow it. I like it. I comment if I have, you know, if, if there's something, you know, good I have to say, I'll say it, you know, and, and I, li I like him. I would love to meet him in person if he's watching this video. You know, I would love to speak to you, meet you in person because everything you do is amazing. If it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't even have had the courage to do any of this stuff. But um, his button setup, you know, are, was nice at the time, you know, but they're all now starting the median price, you know. This setup right here, like I said, was about $68 on Amazon with uh, free shipping. So, uh, you know, it's the same price that Am um, ETA buttons were, were, but I feel that you get a little more with this setup. Um, also, you get different color verification, you know, ver variations, you know. I went with the combination of blue and yellow right here. Got it for the same price. You could do any type of colors you want. You could even do solid colors all the way through. Or you could do a combination, which you've seen on my actual cabinet. My first uh, arcade one-up cabinet, the Street Fighter that I modified. It has the multicolor with a lot of the white. And I like, I, I love that too, you know. And... and the balls, the the uh, ball top, also come in the color of the buttons. So in this combination, I got a yellow ball top and a blue ball top. But I already, I'm gonna change those out to the bat tops, you know, and and definitely, you know, have that look with the bat tops. So I've been switch, you know, I've been you get the you get the uh, the colored ball tops with the controls. Now I've been switching all my controls with bat tops. And like I said, for this setup, I'm going to do a uh, uh, a blue clear uh, bat top and a yellow bat top because I, I I I'm more comfortable with the bat tops. They feel they feel good in my hands. Um, I suffer from carpal tunnel, you know, being in a wheelchair and pushing myself for so many years, as well as crawling around the house when I was younger, has has led me to a uh, a bad case of carpal tunnel. So. These joy, these uh, controls, these bat tops help a lot. So here's the uh, the clear blue one, okay, that I plan to do for my Sub Zero side. That's that one, and then um, a clear yellow one, which I plan to do for my Scorpion side. You know, and I got these from uh, DIY Retro Arcade as well. So yeah, I got these from uh, DIY. Retro Arcade and and I love them. They're, they're, they're at a good price. He, he has some good stuff. His name is Shane, my buddy Shane. He has some great prices and I I definitely uh, like this, you know, a lot. I like this style look. You know, this look and this style a lot. So um, that's going to be my project for the day, you know. I'm not going to go enhancing the video on putting the vinyl, putting the buttons. I've done all this in all my videos. You guys don't need to hear my voice and see me do this all over again. What I'm going to be doing is jumping in a lot of places, you know, a lot of stops and just, you know, getting it done so that you guys can see the final product and see how it looks. And then from there, we'll test it out on the pie and, and get some gameplay in there. Um, I would like to go back. I think I have to edit this later on. But the uh, vinyl came from Tyler at Arcade Graphics, if I didn't say it before. The vinyl came from uh, Tyler at Arcade Graphics. I apologize if I made a mistake earlier in the video. I will edit it. But this is going to be my little project. This is going to be my little setup. Um, I think the most I've spent so far, I say about 70 bucks, if not less. Because like I said, the joysticks and the buttons were 68 These bat tops were very cheap, very inexpensive, and great quality. And um, everything else... Um, you know, probably the uh, the vinyl was under 15, so I'd say about 75. Yeah, let's say let's say 75, 80 bucks to be safe. Um, the plexiglass I had left over, I probably paid for that earlier in the, in another project, but that's fine. All this is recycled stuff. We're gonna we're gonna use it. We're gonna make something good out of it. We're gonna make a good project out of it, and hopefully, you know, come up with something nice. 
Um, thank you for watching so far, and let's get to it. Okay, so this is what we've gotten so far. Um, I put down the buttons that I said I was going to lay down, the blue and the yellow for the Sub-Zero and the Scorpion. I got these from SJ at JX. I'll leave a link at the bottom. They're on Amazon for $68. Um, Prime member, free shipping. The uh, graphic I got off of Google. Send it to my buddy uh, Tyler at um, Arcade Graphics. He printed it out for me, sent it out. I got it in within two or three days. It looks amazing. The only thing I messed up on, and I'm not blaming him, it's always my fault here. Um, the second R2 button, or L, you know, the R2 on here, cuts off Scorpion's face a little. Um, I was a little upset about that. I wasn't even going to add that button, but you know what? I said, the hell with it. The hole was already there. I said, the heck with it. This is, um, like I said, this project is a recycled parts. It's a cool little project I wanted to do. It's a side project. You know, it gives me an extra uh, controller panel to mess with if later on. I do want to put this in an arcade cabinet or not. Um, I'm going to use it as a standalone control, control stick so that I can have some friendly competition with my son and my grandson. So, um, this is what we got. We did the uh, clear uh, bat tops in the yellow and the blue. I think it looks amazing. Let me, let me showcase a, a couple of the parts that I used here from Home Depot. Um, right here we used uh, what we call Flathead Phillips. These are the Everlast Flathead Phillips 10 by 24. Uh, 1024, I'm sorry, is the thread that um, Arcade One Up uses on their cabinets, um, and it's and it's uh, the uh, perfect fit. I went with a one inch. I could have went with a three eight. I I didn't want to test, you know, I didn't want to get it wrong, so I I went with a one inch. But next time I could go for a three uh, three eighths for the simple fact that I don't need it any longer. I did a one inch and cut it down to size for the simple fact that we went. And put it on the. We did it. We put on some. What are these called? T nuts. Also by Everlast. 1024 thread. 5 by 16 in um, size. Okay, let me zoom that in a little so you guys can see that. Okay, by Everlast. Oh, Everbit. I'm sorry. Ever. Everbit. Built. Built. Everbit. I'm sorry. I, I, I said that wrong. But, um. Uh, they're 1024 uh, thread, 5 by 16. Let me give you a, a little look of what they look like. <clears throat> right there, they're a T. They're called T nuts. And what it does, what it does is it engraves itself in the wood. Okay, so that you can screw it. Uh, it won't move. And you can just screw the screw in. As you can see, they're a little shiny. It's because I cut them to size. With my Dremel, I didn't need to use a a one inch. I needed like a three eighths. It would have been smaller. But uh, that's for anybody that's gonna do this project. You guys know you can use the three eighths. You don't need the uh, the uh, one inch uh, screw. Okay, so I put those on there. Um, I went with a set of pan head Phillips screws, sixteen by three eighths. I got these at Ace. I keep all my loose screws in uh, pill bottles. It makes it easier for me. I just tape the information on the side. Okay. I got these in Ace. I think I paid a buck less than $2, if anything. I put those on the control sticks. I may prematurely glue them, but I have a little confidence in my product. Plus, I know I wanted to keep these steady so they don't move. And that's on there. On the... Uh, Zero delay board, I put it in the center. I'm going to have the cord running through here, through the uh, buttons out of the, uh, the box. I'm going to put the original casing on this. And um, I'll show you what I did with that. But that's the zero delay board. All I got to do is wire it up. I'm not going to do that on the video. I've done it on, other, on my other videos. Please check that out. But um, I will show you what it looks like after. So that you can see how neat and clean it looks to me. And... How much better it is than having all those little wires around. Um, what else can I show you here? On the front, again, on these screws, I went with ever, ever bit, ever, ever built, built. I guess that's what it says. 
Uh, number 10, uh, finishing washers. Okay. These finishing washers make it a nice, clean look. Let me zoom into that so you guys can see that. There you go. You can see how nice and neat it looks. It's, it's like flat surface. Real nice. These are the screws that I use. They're a one inch. Like I said, I could have went with a three eighths. All right, and they fit right in there. They have a nice flat finish, and they sink into that washer. Really good, and I think it looks. I think I think it looks amazing. It it prevents scratching when you're playing, and stuff like that. So it looks pretty good. Um, other than that, I mean. That's it that I did for uh, the control panel. Um, let me show you what I did with the bottom half of the uh, control panel. Hold on. The uh, bottom casing, I really haven't done anything yet to it. Um, the only thing I did add was these uh, skid, heavy duty skid pads that I got at Home Depot. Also by Ever, Ever I gotta pronounce this right, Ever Built. Ever Built, Ever Built, I guess. That's the way it, it doesn't look like it. But anyway. That's uh, in a one inch four pack. Okay, let me zoom into this so you can see this. That is in a one inch four pack. They look like little skids. Right here, you can see. All right, and I use the uh, screws that I um, got also from Home Depot, ever built. I'm gonna say ever built. Uh, 10 by 24 thread in a not that one I did it in a one inch which I could have done a 3 8 as well all right but I cut those down to size and I I bolted them with two uh, two nuts so I got those in there and it's holding it in, in, in nice tightness place let me show you on the other side I did uh, two screws uh, two bolts on that I could have done a 3 8 but I left, I cut it down with the Dremel, sand it down and put those in there and they're holding pretty good. And I did it on all four corners so there's no skidding, you know. And this plate, um, what I might also do on this is the coin button. Once I uh, situate it on the controller board, the coin buttons I'm going to put on the side. I'm going to drill the hole on the side of this and put the coin buttons on the side so it's just easy to hit if you want extra credit. And I'll showcase that after um, everything is built. Um, I just wanted to show you all the parts I used. Everything was very inexpensive. I got everything at Home Depot. Other than the uh, 6 by 30, uh, 3 8 screws. I got those in uh, Ace. I could have got them at Home Depot as well. But it's it was just a thing. But um, let's stop the video for now. Let me put this together. Let me do a, a little testing on it. And then... I'll showcase the whole thing. Be right back. Okay, guys, we're done. Um, I'm going to say this project was very easy. Not hard to do with the fact that I had most of these parts in-house. Um, these were all extra parts from my original Street Fighter cabinet. I'm very uh, somewhat happy with it. There's a couple of things I'd, I'd change if I could go back in time. I definitely would uh, change a couple of things that I should have left in my mind the way I should, you know, the way I envisioned it, I should have done what um, my head said instead of, you know, you know, sometimes your gut doesn't always, you know, always good thing. I think my mind should have, I would have went with certain things here. Um, I would have not done the R2 buttons here. These buttons, the holes were originally on the board, but not on the vinyl, not on the plexi. So I should have left those out because of the fact that they were there. I kind of felt that I should, you know, I, I let me let me take advantage of them, but then later on, as I finalized everything, I realized that I cut off uh, Scorpion's face a little, and the R2 buttons, um, I could have switched these over, put the L2 here, and the R2 buttons is really irrelevant. It's re re really irrelevant in the uh, Pi setup, so I could have put the L2 and the R2 on the side and put the coin buttons there maybe later on if I get a little extra dollars I'll reprint the uh, vinyl have the, print, the vinyl reprinted and do a new plexi and just do that um, I did put the coin button 
on the side okay like I said I was gonna do let me flip this over this is the bottom casing okay I can actually put this inside an arcade cabinet if I want to if I take the buttons out off the side but like I said this will be a standalone uh, controller board joystick just plug it to a pie that way I could test test certain things play a couple of games when I'm bored you know just plug it into a test buy and have some fun some friendly competition with my uh, son and my grandson like I said but again I did put the coin button on the side and later on if I decide to change anything I'll put the other button there and and, and set that up let's turn it on one more time there's no speaker in this um, I didn't go for that I didn't do that I left that as is without a speaker I get the sound right off the monitor the TV whatever the ply, pie is plugged in the length of the cable is long enough so that I could use this as a joystick you know from my TV or the pie and um, play like that if I want to maybe later on I'll put this on a foldable table you know cut out a foldable table and, and, and drop it into that I might do that later on in the future I don't know yet um, but as for now you know this is the uh, look and feel of it this is what I came up with this is what I like I hope you guys like it let me turn it on here put on the uh, raspberry test pie that I got and like I said it lights up perfectly you got the yellow side on one side the blue side on the other sub-zero scorpion we have the clear bat top joysticks the buttons on the side are the coin buttons and they light up as well okay the company SJ at JX uh, has these on Amazon you could get them with a fully lit LED buttons or you can get it that it lights up when you press the buttons either or they're both the same pricing um, I'm happy with it uh, you know it was a nice little quick project it was something to clean up some extra parts and it's something you know fun and play with you know I might put a handle on the top here so I can carry it a little better put a handle and carry it around but other than that it's it's done uh, please leave a like a comment subscribe to the channel if you like the channel um, look me up on reddit um, I'm also on Twitter I put these on Twitter as well as a uh, disability uh, reddit also under disability and um, thank you for watching enjoy